Good evening, everyone. You're watching Politically Correct, and I am your host, Maya Hayekawa. Young people today are no longer relying on former employment to make a living. The youth are taking a bold step in taking control of their lives by creating jobs for themselves. Here with me today is the co-founder of Nye City Young Entrepreneurs Under 30, NCYE, an entrepreneurial hub designed for mentoring and shaping young entrepreneurs, Dennis Asiyama, who also happens to be an entrepreneur himself. Also here with me today, we have Joseph Kinyanjui, an active member of NCYE and also an entrepreneur in real estate. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Maya. Thank you so much for coming uh, to the show. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to start off because, you know, we cannot talk about entrepreneurship and not highlight um, the Obama weekend, which happened oh, yes. just a couple of weeks ago. The entrepreneurship summit, which everyone was talking about, Kenya was in a standstill uh, for just uh, for, for the full weekend. So I want I want to know. So what do you guys think um, Kenyans were expecting or let's say Africa in more general? What were they expecting from the summit and did we get what we were expecting? Well, um, the summit was a very uh, interactive uh, event. And I think what most people were expecting was a chance to be given a platform to showcase their ideas and their innovations to an audience that has the power to actually do something about it, you know, and not just local investors. The fact that we have serious people from, you know, overseas, from America, the Shark Tank people were there. Mm -hmm. Um, it's such a good opportunity to showcase your innovations to the right audience who have the power to actually make it something big. Uh, so I think in terms of what we were expecting, this was a brilliant event. It was also a good event, a uh, good opportunity to network with um, a lot of influential people and investors because also you know in the local scene we have so many investors who are hiding somewhere on the sidelines but this whole global entrepreneurship summit was actually like it stirred up the waters and you know such people were able to you know come out into the open and you had access to them and you know they were within reach and so it was a very very good opportunity for aspiring entrepreneurs and the youth in general Joseph, your thoughts? Uh, I, I think uh, the GES summit itself was a great, great success. One, everyone is focusing on Africa, and Kenya was in the, in the map. Everyone was watching what was happening, what are the, these innovations. And Kenya is a hotbed of innovation. Kenya is a hotbed of entrepreneurship. The famous words of The famous words. Oh, words. Oh, yes. <laughs> Kenya is a hotbed of entrepreneurship. Yes, and um, there's a lot that happened over, over that weekend. It was a brilliant weekend. Youth got inspired, and uh, a lot of networks were, were, were exchanged, and opportunities were explored, whereby you find there are so many deals that are being discussed at the moment. We, we saw, you know, young ladies like... Um, Hilda, Hilda, Hilda Mora, she gave a very nice presentation. She was representing the Kenyan entrepreneur, the young entrepreneurs. And at the end of the day, here she's, you know, she's, someone wants to buy out, you know, the, the company mm -hmm. and uh, do business and big business with her. Mm -hmm. So to me, I would say the, the, the Global Entrepreneurship Summit was a great success. It came at the right time when Kenya is on the move, when Africa is on the move. Mm -hmm. And we were ready for it and we are taking the next move. Um, now, you know, you've just brought up something that stirred up a lot of controversy on social media. I'm talking about um, someone tell CNN hashtag, which um, got a lot of attention all over the world when yep. CNN apparently oh, yes. referred to Kenya as a hotbed of uh, terror. Yes. Now, I want to know what you guys thought of that. What were your thoughts in terms of, um, you know, the revolution, the social media revolution and Kenyans um, really coming together and saying, hold up, hold up. We, you know, you can't just say what you want. Well, um, for me, my observation was that, you know, a lot of media critics, especially people who've not experienced Kenya or been in the Kenyan environment, it's very easy to generalize and, and summarize a situation based on maybe one particular event. But what happens actually in Kenya is that uh, instead of being a hotbed of terror, it is actually a place that ideas. It's actually a hotbed of innovation and ideas. And the fact that young people are being encouraged and empowered to develop these innovations 
means that there's so much potential. It's only that people are yet not to be fully aware of what Kenya is capable of. Mm -hmm. So in my words, I would correct the CNN and, and you know, tell them instead of thinking of Kenya as a terror hotbed, they should think of Kenya as the next big thing in technology. Joseph, do you yeah. think that uh, Kenyans uh, and even Africans are tired. They are tired of the misrepresentation of our country, um, of our uh, continent um, in the international scene. Do you think that was a reflection of that? I, I think that was a major misrepresentation of the, 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 the situation on the ground. Kenya is a very beautiful, beautiful country. It's a hotbed of beauty, hotbed for tourism, exactly. hotbed for entrepreneurship, hotbed for good people. Hotbed for Obama. Hotbed for Obama <laughs> home. This is a home for the president of the United States of America. Yes. And that's why I would like even the CNN, when they're giving the story about Kenya, can we Africans give our own story? Can we have an African on CNN giving the Kenyan story? They would give it on a different way, in a different view. And that's where the problem comes in. The lady who is just seated there giving a story about Kenya, she, has never even, she does not even know where Kenya is. She can only Google and see where Kenya is, but she has never been the, on, the, on the Kenyan soil. Mm -hmm. So we'd like even to urge the international communities, the, the world at large, that Kenya is a beautiful country. Come and invest. We as a youth are ready to partner with uh, like-minded people. It's, no, it's not about slavery, it's about partnership. And Obama said it very well. Africa is on the move and Kenya, mm -hmm. and, uh, we want to be the drivers of that bus. Mm -hmm. Going ahead to the to the to the promised land. I am so glad that you brought that up. You brought um, up uh, Obama's uh, address to yes. the nation, and uh, um, he made some very powerful remarks in terms of entrepreneurship and what it means uh, in his address in Kasarani Stadium. Let's have a quick look at a snippet of his speech. Have a look. Uh, we are joined today by inspiring entrepreneurs from more than 120 countries, and many from across Africa. And all of you embody a spirit that we need to take on some of the biggest challenges that we face in the world. The spirit of entrepreneurship, the idea that uh, there are no limits to the human imagination, that ingenuity can overcome uh, what is and create uh, what needs to be. And everywhere I go across the United States and around the world, I hear from people, but especially young people, who are ready to start something of their own, to lift up people's lives and shape their own destinies. And that's entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship creates new jobs and new businesses, new ways to deliver basic services, new ways of seeing the world. It's the spark of prosperity. It helps citizens stand up for their rights and push back against corruption. Entrepreneurship offers a positive alternative to the ideologies of violence and division. They can all too often fill the void when young people don't see a future for themselves. Entrepreneurship means ownership and self-determination, as opposed to simply being dependent on somebody else for your livelihood and your future. Entrepreneurship brings down barriers between communities and cultures and builds bridges that help us take on common challenges together. Because one thing that entrepreneurs understand is, is that you don't have to look a certain way or be of a certain faith or have a certain last name in order to have a good idea. All right, and that was a little clip of uh, President Barack Obama's address to the nation during the sixth Global Entrepreneurship Summit, which happened just the other weekend. Now, the president so eloquently described what entre uh, entrepreneurship means to him, what an entrepreneur is. And I'm curious to know, uh, you guys being entrepreneurs, what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? What does entrepreneurship mean to you? Well, um, to me, entrepreneurship means coming up with an idea, developing it, and finding a way to turn it into a profitable business. Because, um, you know, as much as you might be good at something, uh, you, you have to be able to develop it uh, and, you know, to a way that you can actually turn it into something tangible in a business. And so 
for me, entrepreneurship, it just basically means being able to come up with a good idea and turn it, turning it into a profitable business. And for you, Joseph? And, and entrepreneurship, uh, to me, is, is just developing the concept more, developing the idea more and taking it to the next level. Not having just the idea, but now the implementation stage of it, and it's a process. It's not a one thing uh, affair. It's not something that is instant. It's something which is a process and you have to take it through, 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 through the necessary steps mm -hmm. it's supposed to be taken through. So, and, and the solution for the more major problems we have in the world and Africa, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in particular, it's, uh, they're going to be solved by, through entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And the best thing is that most of these innovations that are happening are being done by young people who have the entrepreneurial mind. So they want to develop the concept more and into an advanced stage uh, whereby they also have a gain, but also have a social impact at the other side. And, in, and a very interesting, important point that you brought out that just reminded me um, a saying that someone once told me that um, the society of today uh, is a microwave society. You just expect to pop something into the microwave for two minutes, three minutes, and it's ready. And I like the idea of process, that we keep forgetting that there is a process in everything. And um, another point you brought out was in terms of um, entrepreneurship and how it can solve so many issues and problems uh, here in Kenya. What issues and problems are you re referring to that entrepreneurship can solve? Uh, we, we have, okay, I'll just take uh, like an issue in the agribusiness world. You are seeing how youth are coming with different, seeing the different uh, presentation and workshops we had at the pre-GS at KCC, and so the young entrepreneurs who are doing agribusiness, the different ways and cheaper way of farming. Mm -hmm. By so doing, you find we are going to have, uh, we are going to be secured in terms of our food storage and uh, security in the country. If we invest more with these young entrepreneurs, they are one, transforming our lives through our, our, our healthy eating, and secondary, they are making um, uh, some, uh, some money alongside. So it is social business. Mm -hmm. It's you're making money on one side, and the other side you're impacting, you're impacting people's lives positively. So, and there are so many other ways of, uh, look at the issue of like M-Pesa, it was there, it's not a new thing, but Kenya, it's said to be, you know, we are the originality of it, and it has solved so many problems, which were, you know, where I'm a lady from, uh, from, the, from the local village, or whatever, in Turokana, in Mandela, or whatever, I can send money to them, they will draw the money on the other side, where was that happening before? It, it used never to happen. So most of these innovation are going to solve our problems. We are, going, we are having these, uh, the health uh, uh, applications, mm -hmm. whereby someone can just consult a doctor on, or just on your mobile phone. These are going to help people who don't have immediate access to a hospital mm -hmm. and get at least first aid, uh, first aid advice on their, on, their, on their mobile phone. So some of these innovation and solutions are going to have a very major implication in our lives and they are going to improve our living standards at the end of the day. Yeah. All right. And interestingly, President uh, Barack Obama pointed out that uh, the marginalized members of society actually don't have um, opportunities and access to um, entrepreneurial uh, opportunities because of the attitudes that we have towards them. Maybe they're not, uh, we think that they're not capable of making it. And he pointed out um, specifically towards women. And I want to know, um, where do you think this mindset comes from that women, you know, are not business minded? And do you think that it's actually prevalent here? Well, I can say that um, from the past, we have this kind of colonial mindset whereby uh, people have always undermined women and, and really doubted on a woman's capability. But as we can see, as times are changing, women are actually pioneering really large companies. I'll use a local example of um, the Keroche Industries. You can see it's run by a lady and it employs hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. Um, as much as it's been facing challenges lately because of uh, political divides and discrimination, I think women have the power to actually run these kind of enterprises and they should be given a platform to develop this and to extend it further because um, when a woman sets her mind on doing a particular job, um, they do it very well, relatively well, you know, compared to men. And so if they're given a chance to, you know, um, run these organizations, they are more likely to do a really good job and actually create an empire and they deserve an equal chance. It's, it's not, it doesn't mean that a man should, you know, be given more priority uh, simply because they are a man, but women are very, they have a lot of potential. And yeah, 
I think they should be empowered a little bit more, um, you know. Thank you for that, Dennis. Very interesting conversation, gentlemen, that we're having here. We need to take a quick break. I can see that uh, there are lots of uh, opinions that you want to bring out. You want to hold that thought, Joseph. When we come back uh, from the break, then you can give us what your thoughts are. Um, you are watching Politically Correct with me, of course, Ms. Maya Hayekawa. Our guests for today, we have Dennis Asiema and also Joseph Kinandui, who are both members of uh, Nairobi City Young Entrepreneurs Under 30, very young, successful entrepreneurs men and uh, they're here to shed a lot of light in terms of entrepreneurship and so make sure that you keep it tuned here we're taking a short break but stay tuned <laughs> 